What is good guys, you're here with Nate. This is Crossbeats Production and thank you for tuning in. I want to share with you guys how I recorded the vocals. This is part three of the how to make a song from scratch. And uh, this is the recording of the vocals. So I'm going to show you how I use the pitch correction plugins, uh, reverb, EQ, and all that good stuff on the recording chain, how I got the actual finalization of the vocal. And then I'll show you in the next part, which will be part four of this video, uh, the final stages of the, the mixing of the vocal and the mastering and all that sort of stuff that goes with it. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Uh, hopefully you get something out of it and uh, we'll go straight into the recording and I'll show you how I set that all up. So here on the screen, we're inside of the project of a just a blank canvas with the instrumental and uh, the recording track that I've got armed already. So you can see my vocals coming through that track. Uh, this isn't the actual song. I'll show you the setup of that in a later date uh, once I'm mixing it and all that sort of good stuff. But I want to show you how I recorded the vocal, what I did, and um, just give you the, the insight of all that. So. Let's go through the plugins. So first off, uh, the plugin that we've got here, uh, which is on here, this is a pitch correction plugin. Uh, the song is in the key of C sharp uh, minor. So this is a natural minor scale. And I'm using pitch correction response as quite fast. Uh, so 14 milliseconds is how quick it actually catches on to the pitch. And then it corrects it and all that good stuff that this plugin does. Uh, the reason why I'm using Logic X to record the vocal rather than Studio One, which is what I would normally do um, if it was just creating a track or mixing it, is because of this free plugin. So pitch correction is kind of cool um, that it, you know Logic X gives you this plugin for free. Otherwise, I'd have to spend about ninety-nine dollars or more. I think it's about one hundred ninety-nine actually for the Auto Tune plugin that they make out there by Anturus. Uh, I might do another video in the future if you guys want to see that, um, but for now we'll go with pitch correction inside of Logic X. So um, let's go with how this all is set up. I'm going to put my headphones on, so uh, let's see how we go. Uh, so we've got the track. I can just hear myself. Usually I'll leave one ear open um, just for the ability to hear my voice as well as what's happening in the headphones. So it kind of makes it easier. And uh, secondly, I have a pop filter on here as well, which I'll just bring up onto the microphone. So two things about the pop filter. One is I use a pop filter because it gets rid of the S's and the P's and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is just a cheapie, uh, but it works quite well um, and does the job. Secondly, it's to get the correct microphone placement. So the distance between myself and the microphone, uh, so I'm not too close into the microphone because if you are um, or far away, um, it'll kind of make your sound of your recording a little bit uh, different. So you may not want to do that. You may want to have the correct microphone placement in every recording that you do. So uh, that, that this helps out a lot. Um, a couple of things with, with Logic X, just to, to go through it. If you want to skip to the actual recording of this vocal, it'll be a timestamp below. But um, there is this thing here called low latency, which if you click that, it allows your, your latency of your voice through the interface uh, be corrected by the, the software. Um, that's something that I tend to use if I'm rapping because I use like quite, you know, if you're rapping fast or you're rapping uh, or any anything, any recording actually, to be honest, if you're just wanting to have it in your headphones on the recording at the same time, um, that definitely helps out very much so. Um, because of the reason why I'm recording this track in just one track and the instrumental, that's mainly because I've got my buffer setting, which I'll show you here. I've got that to 32 uh, buffer size samples. So 32 is the, the sm smallest that you can do in Logic. Um, it definitely helps with the relay or the buffering of um, latency. So that's how I do it. So uh, let's get into the recording. I'll just play the track and I'll show you what it sounds like. I'll just go through the recording. Uh, from the best of my knowledge, I wrote this track a couple of weeks back, so I'm having... Um, not the best time re remembering all the actual lyrics for it, but I actually wrote it myself. So I'll try and remember it the best I can. So let's go through it. I'll arm these plugins here. So pitch correction and the space designer and also the channel EQ. So you can see for EQ, um, you, first off, you can hear the correction. So if I sing like a no way, it sort of it corrects it for me. Uh, so you can hear that on and off now. So in the chain of things here, um, just so you know as well. Actually, what I'll show you before we get to that, inside of UAD, I've got the console. Uh, this console here, I'll just turn this EQ, uh, sorry, reverb off. Uh, so inside of UAD, I have the console with a bit of compression on there already. So I've got an LA-2A on my channel going in. So if I talk too loud, it corrects it a bit. Now I don't have to worry about the correction later on. So I record with compression on because it really does help uh, level out the vocal. If you didn't have this available to you, 
um, you could just put a compressor inside of Logic and uh, work from there. But if you do that, you have to worry about a bit of the latency and all that sort of stuff by adding more and more plugins in your mix. So I tend not to do that. So um, this microphone I'm recording on, just so you know, it's a Rode uh, Procaster microphone. It has a pop filter in it already, so it's I, I like the, the sound of this on my vocals. So uh, let's get straight into the recording. First off, we'll just go through pitch corrections first. Then we've got this here, which is the Space Designer. Nice plate reverb on, on nice plate. And then I just changed the wet down to about minus 23. We'll activate that now. So you can hear it's a bit of a delay slash um, sort of reverb effect. If you didn't want that, you, want, you don't want to sound like you're in a bathroom, I would recommend using a delay setting. So get the tape delay, put that on put there, that on as, there well. as well, and put dry and up. Dry up. Dry put this down to about 20. about 20. So that could, so help, that could you help you getting a bit, getting of, an a bit of an effect as well. As well. Uh, let's uh, maybe let's try maybe that try out. That, that, out. Might, that work. might work. I'm just going to try this here, here first. first. Uh, might, uh, might put that down. down. Alright, so we've got 12%. Let's try, let's and, try record and record the vocal. vocal. Alright. If I listen to what people say I would never talk If I listen to what people say So you guys can kind of hear I didn't record that vocal But if I was This is what it would look like You'd hit record um, And then we start again from here Let's go from here I would never see If I listen to what people say I would be me if I listen to what people say You would never know If I listen to what people say You would never go If I listen to what people know Hey, I would never see See, If I listen to what people say I would be me I would trust just like you As I walk I've been driving channels just like you Hey, as I talk Now you know where I come from Riding in the heart Now you know where I come from Hey, from, from the start hey. And life seems formulate, formulate Like it's Noah's Ark Now if I was recording the vocal You guys can see that my vocal has been recorded. Now, if I was recording the vocal, I'll just take off all these effects here. So you can kind of see that's how it kind of rolls with the vocal recording. It's not too difficult to, to kind of get a good vocal if you just put the right plugins, the right kind of reverb, all that good stuff on your vocal there. Uh, but if you're working with, uh, I guess, a talented singer, then maybe you may not want to use too much of this pitch correction stuff uh, in, you know, prior to their recording if they like the pitch correction in the recording and they want it and you know they're listening to it and they like the sound of it then go for it use it um, pitch correction nowadays is becoming a plugin that everybody seems to use even if it's in sparingly amounts on their vocals um, but you know it is what it is uh, hopefully you guys can kind of see how you know you can record your own vocals even in logic x it's so easy to get a good sounding vocal and uh, work with it from there you can see that's just one take i didn't do this properly but you can kind of hear how it all sounded and uh, how it works out so first off we'll just go from scratch just to get these plugins set up um, how i chose and all that sort of good stuff what i did why i did it all that uh, so you know so this is what it would look like i'd have the recording channel as channel one because that's on my input for my uad interface there and then I added in the pitch correction. So that's right there, pitch correction in mono. Uh, so that's down in this thing here. This menu here has got the mono channel right there. Uh, so I just throw that straight on the channel as it is. And to select the correct amount of pitch correction and the key that I'm in, uh, basically I went from uh, the root note. So this is blacked out because none of these uh, are going to show me in, in the chromatic uh, scale there. But if I know, for an example, if I know the tracks in a minor scale, then I would select minor. Um, if you have no idea what track, uh, what your, your key, your track is, uh, there are plugins out there that can sort of give you an analysis of the key of your track. 
Uh, but this one is definitely in the key of C sharp minor. So because I created the track, I already knew it. If I didn't, I would just sing with this um, and just try and switch through, you know, between, because it's only going to be an, uh, either a natural minor or a major, usually anyway. Um, you can kind of guess it if it sounds right to you, if you've got completely tone deaf ears, then maybe it's going to be a bit of trouble. Um, <laughs> but I don't know if you should be mixing if you're completely tone deaf, that's probably not the best of ideas. But um, if you're not and you can hear it, um, work with what you've got. So this is in the key of C sharp, natural minor. And pitch correction, depending on how fast you want it, you can go all the way, which is zero response, and that'll correct everything as fast as possible and makes your vocal sound like it's a robot type of uh, T-Pain effect. Um, I wanted it to be a little bit less than that, so I don't want it to be too, too drastic. So I went for about, at the start, I think I went 30 or 38 at the end, um, but about 14 is pretty comfortable for me when I'm first recording the vocal. And it kind of works out, um, you know, it just it makes it sound like you can sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that's terrible. So let's go for the next plugin, which was Space Designer. You'll find that in the reverb section here. This is Space Designer. What I would do is create a mono to a stereo track. Uh, reason being is because in Space Designer, you want to have a left and right so that you can hear the actual uh, reverb effectively. You don't have to have a stereo reverb when you're doing that, but it does help a lot. Um, I liked the way it sounds when you first load it up. To be honest, it's a nice reverb, uh, but I, I tend to go for plates because I like plates uh, with my vocal. So I would hit to nice plate and then I reduce this down a bit so it's a bit less wet and more dry. Uh, you can mess with the pre-delay if you want. It really comes down to what you want your, your reverb to sound like. Another cool effect, which I'll just show you. Uh, there goes my, my uh, thing here. Let me just secure that. There we go, there we go! And now put the reverb on reverse. So that's a sick effect. Now what you can do with that effect, if you want, um, I use it creatively. It's so easy inside of uh, Logic to do that. I'll just take off the, um, the effects here. Uh, actually, I might leave that on and just do this. Yeah, so inside of Logic, it's really easy to get effects like that happening with your vocal um, with the reverse effect. And I really like that because, you know, if you want to automate this, you can just go reverse the reverb. And it does it depending on how much wet you have. So if I have a lot of wet, you can do stuff like that and make it sound crazy. So what I would do inside of this is, um, I'd set it up at the start, depending on where I want it. And this is what I did inside of the track. I'll show you that later. Uh, but where I was working with it was at the start or into transitions of the track. And I was reversing my vocal into that. Um, that was a kind of a cool thing to do and it sounded good. So, hey, it worked out. Um, next thing that I did was, I was messing with the delay. So, so, so you can see with can delay, see with delay it puts a lot of um, effect in my vocal. And you don't always have to use delay. It just really depends on, on what you want to do. Um, but I, I tend to think that when you fill out the spaces just with a vocal, because if you have an empty-ish kind of track like I have, um, you want to make things creative inside the track. And that was my plan for this track to allow myself to breathe, uh, do different things inside the track and kind of uh, create a variation in that. But it worked out well. I, I put the output, uh, I think it was about minus 12 or 15% um, according to dry versus wet. And uh, then I put that on there. So, so you can hear, you can hear that, my that my vocal, vocal echoes. echoes. And now I do this now I less. Do this less. So, 6% so 6 is kind of about right. You don't want too much. And we'll put the pitch correction on and uh, see how that sounds. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So it just creates a bit more ambience. But the thing is, with the EQ, I usually take out somewhere about 180 um, on my voice. And I go about that minus 18%. Um, the reason why I do this, and I also take out some of the tops, uh, because with this vocal, and I'll take all these effects off, um, with this vocal that I've got, with my vocal, um, I know this microphone kind of exasperates the high-end frequencies, so I take out the highs first. Well, I take out both. I take out the lows because I know I've got too much low end with the mic, um, and with the with the high-end stuff, I take out the highs because around about here at 6K, um, it kind of exasperates the high-end frequencies with the S's and stuff like that. 
Um, and this is just a choice of mic. So it really depends on the choice of mic that you have uh, in your recordings. But if you're not using um, this mic or you're using something else, uh, just, just mess around with the EQ. Just figure out where you like the sound of it. It doesn't have to be drastic EQ at the start. Um, but I would recommend taking out some of the low end frequencies, mainly because uh, when you're getting the, the actual track, so you can hear in this track, I'll uh, just play this. I would never see if I listen to what people say, I would be me. So you can hear one thing, my vocal is completely out of tune, and that's because I'm recording with auto-tune on. So um, what I'm doing is I'm kind of singing out of key uh, so that the pitch correction can correct it for me. Um, if I was rapping, I would just be rapping and I wouldn't use auto-tune as much um, because I don't want that kind of effect. But you can hear anyway, with the EQ, um, it kind of corrects uh, and also creates a bit of latency, but it kind of corrects the, the vocal, the low-end stuff here and uh, gets rid of some of that stuff on the mic and then I get rid of some of the high-end stuff like the S's uh, and then I can correct that later on as well, um, which I did in my, my actual recording. Uh, there is a DS, so let's find it, Dynamics. So Logic have a new DS, so it's pretty good. Um, it works out quite well. Um, you can see it cuts out some of the S's when I say S a lot. And that's really beneficial later on. I wouldn't recommend using it while you're recording because it's just going to create more latency. Um, but after the fact, once you've recorded your vocal, um, you can definitely throw that on the channel and mess with it from there. Uh, you've got your frequency here. I think 7K is about where my S's hit anyway. Uh, but if you don't have 7K and you've got a, like a high-pitched voice or something like that, or you sound like, a, a, I don't know, Bugs Bunny or whatever, um, use it somewhere else on the ds -er. uh, So anyway, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, this is the recording of the vocal, how I recorded it in my project. I literally had the two-track, which is just an instrumental of my own track. I had bounced that out, and then I used that to record. The reason why I did that, like I was saying at the start, is so I could create less latency. Um, there's not so much happening in the project. And then you build up from there. So if you want to record doubles uh, for your vocal, create a double uh, additional track. Um, you've got all the effects on there still, so you can go back and put that on there again. You don't have to mess around with that. Um, and then you can just um, record the second take or your doubles or your ad-libs or whatever from there. If you don't want the same effects, obviously you can just take them off. But what I would do then is just take off the effects of the already recorded vocals so you're not creating too much latency. And then you're just working, I just got to lay on there. Um, so you're just working with what the vocal is, what you have currently on your, your track. So anyway, hopefully you guys uh, get something out of this tutorial. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'm going to try and bring you guys some more of this good content for recording vocals. And uh, we'll take it from there. Peace out.